back to the shop. This is the world's most dangerous off-road RC saw blade build. I'm just gonna go everything that's in this build video real quick before I hop into the actual building. So basically we had to drill out the center of the saw blades to the correct size. I just started at the smallest diameter drill bit and worked my way up until I was at the correct size. Um, we had to put in a lot bigger gears so we could hit those high speeds. We put on a zero degree rear hinge brace to make the back saw blades perfectly straight. Um, we did a little bit of cutting on the front. Also, this was my infraction. This is my infraction, let me say. It just has my limitless body on it. So I guess we're just gonna call it the infraction limited. It's like straight hybrid style sun and stuff like that. Um, there's a few other things like we got some aero skirts and stuff like that, but that's all in the build video. I had this all filmed already, but there's way too much chit chat. So I'm trying to tone it down and get straight into the building. I hope you enjoy it. All right guys, I got all four saw blades drilled out. I uh, cleaned them up real quick with the grinder just so it's a rough edge. And then um, as you know, the hexes have a rough spot so that'll all help hold. But I'm still gonna lock tight these anyways. I really don't want them to come off. And you can see they fit nice and snug on there. So now, now I'm gonna take this set of sweeps I decided on. You can see they've been destroyed by many crashes, speed running, some of them cracked. Cut out the hexes perfectly around this circle and then we could use that as a space to, to really tighten these down on. I got all four hexes done. I'm about to fit the wheels on. We'll see if it spins all good and stuff. And then we'll start doing the rear hinge pin and start modifying the front because I guarantee I'm not gonna turn with these wheels on. But we will do some cutting or something. Actually, no, no, it's gonna hit it. We'll do some cutting or something. Uh, then we'll finally do the gear change and it should be freaking ready to rip, buddy! Oh yeah. So I'm about to take off the EMP performance zero degree rear hinge brace off my limitless. I kind of feel bad. I already had it all wired up for night speed runs from Polo Creation Lights. Had it all perfect and everything and I haven't had a chance yet with winter. But I got a video of that coming with fitting all the lights and once I get a chance to do one run I'll post the video. But I'll leave a link down in the description of this rear hinge brace. As you can see, it makes it perfectly straight with the chassis, front tires, everything. I love it. I forgot how much it costs, but it's worth every penny. Um, I bought one from Custom RC Upgrades. Complete garbage. I hate it. Uh, I had to modify the car, like cut pieces. I had to cut a little bit of this to fit into the actual chassis. And it looked the exact same as stock. So it's complete garbage. I haven't bought anything from Custom RC Upgrades since, so I can't say anything about their other parts. I heard their other parts are great. So I don't want to bash any companies, just this. Zero degree says right there.
show you guys real quick how well that zero degree rear hinge brace makes everything straight bam perfectly straight all right i got these 3d printed aerial skirts i got off ebay they're nice and lightweight but since this is my infraction the basher this held up i'm pretty sure the first day it broke um i got these metal ones right here also off ebay i could leave a link down in the description they hold up a lot better and they're also super lightweight like they weigh just as much as the 3d printed ones <laughs> okay i think i'm ready to switch out the gears to hit that 104 mile an hour right now we just got the uh stock differential in there with a 18 t pinion from sega customs it's the smallest one they have it's great for bashing i love it love it on this setup um we got a center spool we're gonna add so we could choose whatever eight millimeter bore gear we want for the center for the spur gear and then for the pinion we got all these five millimeter gears so i'm thinking we're going with the 40t pinion and then the 42t spur um if we can't fit that on the pps motor mount then we will go i guess with a 36 37 that's really close to the 1 1 gear ratio but i mean this combo has done great with a 1 1 i've done 40 40 gearing and everything else on it so it should be okay little bit of that heat get this motor loose and guys i'll leave a link in the description for this pps motor mount it's really nice if you guys see right here you got this little set screw right here so once you take off the screws that hold the motor in place this sets your mesh you just push this back and forth and it slides it very slowly back and forth and you can set the mesh perfectly So you just put your little tool right here and you can set the gear mesh. Oh, shoot. Looks like I broke mine. Um, I think just maybe a screw popped out of that and I just gotta find a screw that fits in there. But basically you will be able to slide that back and forth with that set screw. We got the center spool in. We got these spacers from Scorched RC because I ran out of stock ones since now I have spools in both my cars. And as you can see, there's some play there. We'll even put the cover on top to make sure. Yep, still got some play. So we got these diff shims here. They come stock with the car, but I've bought some off eBay. I can leave a link down in the description. I'm not sure what brand they are, but I'm gonna put them towards the front, make it easier for getting my grub screws on and off my motor mount. So my gear is not so close to the motor mount. I'm gonna guess three shims start off with. But really I've used probably like 10 before. You gotta use whatever you need. You want maybe like the tiniest bit of play. You want it to be able to free spin in there. I think we got it with three shims. Now I'll get the pinion on the motor. So as you saw with the center spool, I use this 271 thread locker. This is the best stuff you could use for grub screws. You gotta use heat to take it back off. 
But I'm gonna go ahead and put this on. The Sega Customs has two grub screws, so they really never come apart. It's really nice. I just realized, guys, on the center spool, one of my drive cups is still stock. But the stock drive cups, they will chew through these scorched RC drive shafts right on the end right here on these little dog bones. So you want to buy some upgraded dog bones. These are really nice. I've been using these for a while. Uh, never had any problems or anything like everything else. A link down in the description. All right. And if I ever forget anything in the description, if you need a link, just let me know in the comments and I will add it. All right, we finally have everything ready with the gears and the drive shaft. Got a nice little mesh going on. It is literally pushed all the way over. You can't fit another teeth on any of these gears. So we got 40 pinion, 42 spur. We'll see if that gets us to 104 mile an hour. All right, let's get these puppies on. And just like Hoon's, saw blades are directional. Look, it even has an arrow to point forward towards the front of the car. You always want the teeth to go forward, unless you're trying to do some reverse speed runs or something, but we're just going forward, so it'll work just like that. We'll put a couple dabs of Loctite. All right, I need some way to hold this. Trust these vice grips. We don't mess this, or hand up trying to tighten this. All right, I don't think that's going anywhere, guys. Woo! Woo! I think we're finally about done. I uh, cut the splitter a little bit. Now we can even turn fully. Um... I hot glue gun the front splitter down so we don't get any air underneath or anything. Uh, I'm going to bed. We're testing this in the morning. I've been working on this like forever it feels like. It's like 2 in the morning. So see you guys in the morning. Alright. It's all built ready to rip. So conditions are rough here in Colorado. I can't really find a good lake to do it on down in town. But I might be willing to go up to the mountains and just shovel off a lake. Just shovel a skinny lane and send it down. Otherwise, I'm thinking about driving a couple hours up to Wyoming this weekend. Maybe drive two hours up to Wyoming. And it's a lot windier up there, a lot colder, and also a lot drier. So hopefully just there's no snow on the lakes up there. Otherwise, the lakes down here are already pretty much too soft to drive on. Um, but we're going to run this. I promise, guys. Even if I don't get to rip it on ice, we're going to rip it on grass. We're going to rip it on whatever. I'll do a burnout on plywood. I got some plans for this car. Let me know what you think it's going to do down in the comments. How fast will this go on ice if I hit it? Let me know. Hit that like button. If you're a new watcher, hit that subscribe button and click that bell so you don't miss any of these epic speed runs. See you in the next video.